Mubi is a hand-curated online streaming service with an amazing collection of films from around the globe. This video is not sponsored by them, mind you, although the day I do get sponsored by them is the dream. I haven't seen many films from the platform and I know that I'm yet to see much much more from what it has to offer and if and when I do, I might or might not make more parts of this video. But in this specific video, I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite films that can be viewed on Mubi. Mind you, this video does not spoil any of the films I'm going to be talking about and it is also not a ranking video. Drive My Car Now, I won't go into it too much because I have already briefly talked about this film in my top 10 of 2021 video. But this is a 3 hour long film where you really feel the length but if you're patient enough, this film might just work for you as it did for me. It's about the main character grieving over the loss of a loved one. And the film talks about how life simply just goes on and it doesn't stop for anyone. And we must allow time to heal our wounds instead of painfully sticking to it and enduring the pain. There is no conventional plot in the film where the conflict continues to escalate. The film is slow and meditative. Shots go on for a while. We are given time to breathe and take in what we are seeing on screen. It might not be for everyone, but I felt like my patience was rewarded with the experience of watching this absolute masterpiece. In the Mood for Love This film is a certified classic. The visual look and tone of the film is expertly crafted. The framing of the shots has purpose and intention behind it. Not only does it perfectly encompass faces, but the shot compositions allow for just enough ambiguity to intentionally not make us understand everything, instead allowing us to come up with our own interpretations of what is happening on screen. I wouldn't say that I love this film as much as the world does. The lengthy runtime felt a little dicey and the main characters did not resonate with me as much as I would have liked them to, which made something feel missing. But otherwise, this is a great film. Portrait of a Lady on Fire I would easily consider this film to be one of the best films of the last decade. It follows the love story between two women on an island in the 18th century. This film reflects the situation of women during that particular time period. Plus, the cinematography of the film is simply stunning. The camera work is serene and exudes tranquility, just like these women on the surface, but deep down, they're battling their inner demons. This film also caught me off guard many times because I found myself completely fixated on the short compositions because I thought that I was watching a painting. But when seeing movement within it, I was reminded that it was a moving image that I'm watching. Just a tremendously beautiful film. Cleo from 5 to 7. Agnes Varda was clearly a master of her craft, and after this film, I'll make sure I watch more from her filmography. The film is about a woman, Cleo, who fears that she might have cancer. Now, Cleo is a woman concerned about her beauty and allows it to shape her identity. She is constantly viewing herself through mirrors, and the fear of death challenges her preconceived notions and forces her to reevaluate the way she perceives the world and the way she perceives herself. The story continues to take place in real time. We follow Cleo's journey throughout one afternoon and we see how she changes as a person and how the people she meets play a part in her character arc. Just a brilliant film and I just can't believe that this was Vardha's second film. Petite Maman This film is from the same director of A Portrait of a Lady on Fire so I can't expect anything less. I don't think it's as great as that film in particular but this still is a lovely film. Director Celine Siama portrays time travel in a way that I've never seen before. It doesn't flash or showy, it just expects you to piece together things yourself and doesn't test your intelligence. Petite Maman is a film about a daughter reconnecting with her mother and coming to understand her. Just a lovely, lovely film. King of Comedy This is one of Scorsese's best films and genuinely one of my personal favorite films of all time. It has one of the most interesting film protagonists I've ever seen. Robert De Niro perfectly captures the eccentricities of his character Rupert Pupkin. This film shows us the effects of fan worship and how unhealthy it can get when practiced excessively. Rupert wants to be famous and make a name for himself, but his character flaw is that he doesn't really want to do the work in order to reach the top of the ladder of fame. This is what leads him down the path of breaking the law. He's a lonely man who constantly lives within his fantasies, not too dissimilar from Scorsese's other protagonists. But it's also a critique of who we as a society choose to glorify and how that affects and makes people like Rupert make the choices that they make. The King of Comedy is a triumph in cinematic storytelling. Titan. This is a weird film for me and for many other people I'm sure because it's a great movie but it's also probably the most disturbing film I've ever seen. It's most definitely not for everyone. Most of the scenes are extremely unsettling and sometimes downright unwatchable. I had to look away from the screen just because what I was seeing was disgusting and brutal. Even the concepts this film tries to explore are just odd. But somehow, director Julia de Cornau pulls it off, in my opinion at least. 
I totally understand if someone doesn't like this movie, but I wasn't too surprised that I loved it because I've seen Julia's previous venture Raw, which was another great movie. But despite all the disturbing imagery Titan showcases, which I don't mean to point out as a negative, it still does contain a somewhat heartwarming theme about acceptance. It contains these broken and flawed characters that were a little hard for me to connect with emotionally, but work in service of the film. Julia Decor now is a filmmaker with a unique voice, and we as an audience and a lover of the medium of film should support and champion her work. She's already one of my favorite directors, and I truly cannot wait for what she comes up with next. So yeah, these are some of my favorite films that you can watch on Mubi. I know it's not much and I need to watch a lot more, but if and when I do, and if I find it worth making a video on, you could expect a sequel to this video, who knows? So yeah, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and just have a great day.